So I've had a little subject. little break to get rid of the pins and needles and top up the pegs with a bit of bait and <laughs> yeah, all of that stuff. Focus on your pins and needles, Jay, lad. Right, we're going to be bum and in other areas that were strangely <laughs> arousing. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't walk. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, I'm sat in a bucket. But anyway, next subject is going to be <laughs> da, da, da. silverfish fishing on commercials that we have spent. Oh, mate. The last six months doing pretty. Uh, yeah, six months doing, haven't we? You pretty much changed I how it. I look at it. That um, the whole essence of fishing for skimmers has completely changed for me, Jay, in the, uh, the little pellets, the little pellet route, mate. Yeah. It's something I've never, ever done before. And it's just. I'm going to say it's mind blowing. When that time when you come up to me after the match at Birch House, show me what you've been feeding, Andy. Yeah. Bearing in mind that I just got the smallest, tiniest little toss pot that I've got, them little fruit shoot pots. Yeah. And I was sort of like, probably filling one of them up every go, not thinking I was putting much bait in. It's like, I've had that all day, Andrew. You know what I mean? It just sort of like proper brought it home. And then I'm like, oh, is that why I stopped catching after like three hours? And I've just basically blown my peg. Just too much bait. Yeah, and also the when you put the element of that uh, fish meal in as well, yeah. you know, the super crush. I've never ever fished like that before for them. No, it was you know definitely one. But break, breaking that down, yeah, that was the, the first. So for, for people that haven't maybe seen the videos you've done, yeah. quickly give us a rundown of what, what we're talking about. We're, we're on about intimate skimmer fishing, little skimmers at little venues. Isn't it? That's what it became. That was our first. It's like Valentine's Day every day, wasn't it, fishing for them? Yeah. The first thing we focused on, wasn't it, was a place called Birch House Lakes on yeah, boy. Pool One. I don't even know what it's called, but, but anyway. Is it Kingfisher? I don't know. It might be. A, a little small lake where there's no safe area for the fish. Tom put it in a beautiful way, Tom Scully, that he actually wrote a feature on this subject once we told him what we were doing. And, and anyway. Yeah. And yeah, that, that was a lot of our fishing to start with at a place called Riddings and this birch house. That's what we were doing was delicate pellet fishing, wasn't it? For yeah. skimmers. Yeah. You know I mean? And it was crazy how it changed because birch house before we went, Richard being on quite a bit in the summer, aren't you? Yeah. And I think, again, this was diverting off subject a bit. It was sort of had a false impression of how good it was because... That was before you'd even fished a, a silver yeah. match, wasn't it? Yeah, because I'd, I'd been going and it was an anything goes open match. And yeah. The lake has got a lot of the carp in there are big and old and quite clever. Yeah. So it was always a case that you catch a few early, then then you wouldn't really catch anything till the last hour. So mm -hmm. me and James Pete have been doing it a bit, but we were pretty much the only ones who were sort of having that first hour fishing for silver, uh, fishing for carp, carp is, yeah. and then filling the gaps with silvers, and it was ridiculous. Yeah. You could get away with like just yeah. rafting maggots shallow out in your hand. You catch them short. You keep them coming all day. And you had some big weights, didn't you? You had like 50 pound plus a couple yeah, of times, didn't you? Yeah, I had. Of silvers. Yeah, probably 60 odd was, I didn't, I didn't weigh them separately, which I'm a bit gutted about, but it was like yeah. 90 summit pound. Is that, that, that's that match that you fished on, Yeah, it? but I think there was only like half a dozen carp in there, so yeah. in that weight. Um, but yeah, so you get a bit of a false impression, but it's the same as going pleasure fishing, isn't it? You're the only one and you're not splitting them. Yeah, you had all the silvers to yourself. And it's got, yeah. As it's gone on, it's got a lot harder, hasn't it? Obviously, yeah. Ga uh, Gary Rogers has been running silverfish matches on there, and the pressure, they're it's wise not a lot, though. What's he do? Every other week? Yeah. Every it's other not Tuesday, like it gets yeah. a, It's bone kicked. It was just steady pressure. They were getting caught, whereas yeah, they, they were just wise neglected. up a bit, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. They, were, they hadn't had that much pressure before. And, and it did, it changed. But I think it was both, it changed through pressure a bit, and also just time of year it changed, didn't it? Yeah. By the time we proper, when we went for, what did we go for? We fished that festival, didn't we? So two, we've had two two-day festivals on it, haven't we? Yeah, the well, first one was April, and then we left it all summer, and then we went Oh, no, to... I did a, we did a, a live match, didn't we, in the summer? Was it summer? Yeah, yeah. Warmer, when they were shallow. That's a bit bigger. Is that another perch? A big roach. That's a big it's... roach. That's skimmer. Skim skimmer. Um, so, yeah, it, it became this negative skimmer fishing, didn't it? Yeah. Really, really delicate, and it was all about not feeding the volume of bait or you knackered your peg. And it was so evident, wasn't it, and that some good lads were fishing that had been there all summer. Yeah. And they were all feeding balls of ground bait, fishing, ground bait maggot pinks, whatever pink, over yeah. it. Yeah. And you'd watch them start, and they'd put the ball of ground bait in, not a lot, just one. Um, they'd go over it, they'd catch a couple of skimmers, and then as soon as they topped up, that was the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Instant yeah. game over, wasn't it? Mad. And, and Tom put it a lovely way, Tom Scully, in the, what he thought was happening, which, which probably is happening, is that the fish can't escape. I mean, the, the lake's that 
small. There's yeah. no real escape for them. They're always within a few meters of yeah. bait. A volume of bait they can identify very, very quickly and sit away from it very, very quickly, knowing that they're getting caught. Because it's that time of year when they don't want to clear you out. They just want to, they just want to be, don't they? They might yeah. have a little bit of a feed, but they don't want to eat like they do in the summer. So if your peg's the one with very minimal bait in, it keeps them happy and you, you don't bag up, you just tick over all day long, don't you? Yeah. That's a massive point on it, isn't it? I oh, think huge. It's so easy. You don't panic. realise you've got as much as what you have, do you, with them skim? I mean, I'm horrendous anyway, but with them skimmers, they weigh up, don't they? Yeah. The skimmer fishing. But I think you said it, Riddins was a prime example, wasn't it, where you generally start off a bit slower. A bit slower. Because yeah. they, they get their initial hit as they've put all the ground bait in. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they top, you're ticking over just getting odd fish and you just gradually creep up, you gradually overtake them. Yeah. And as long as you don't panic in the quiet spells, isn't it? Yeah, don't overcook it. But I, I, I think you have less quiet spells by just feeding pellets and crush. We'll talk about the, the two in a minute. Or the one, crush if anything. But by fishing in that way with little piles and ticking over, you catch steadily all day. You do get an odd little faster period, don't you, where you might catch four in, four chucks, but the, you catch so much more evenly spread throughout the five hours. Yeah. Whereas the lads that are fishing ground bait and topping up and all that, they, they do catch really fast in their spells, but they have big spells of barren. Yeah. And that's where you just you overtake them so quick, I don't think you? a lot of the lakes as well, or those, those ones we've mentioned, there's not really... As soon as you get into the proper winter, that you've not really got that option of a short line. You catch very, very no, it little. Went, didn't it? Birch off right went. So you, you obviously when you do top up, if you are feeding ground bait, you've not got that option to sort Just of come back and short. rest it and tick over there. Yeah, yeah. At them little venues, those two were talking about riddings and birch off. So yeah, the, the short line just. Didn't happen, did it? No. Because it had gone, it had just gone that cold and the fish yeah. were all sitting in the middle of the lake. It went really clear, didn't it, as well? Yeah. But it is. That well, was the, the, the biggest de lesson to start with, wasn't it? Definitely, the skimmer wise. I mean, ro roach fishing for me is like roach fishing, whatever you go in it, just, you know, loose feed, lots of bait, mm. um, little than often. But certainly that skimmer fishing, well, having never done it before, it's like it was eye opening, really was. Yeah. And well, I said with the, uh, with the with the crush, so there's not, no actual bait there, but they, they sense something, don't they? Yeah. And obviously your upbeat's there. Crush is massive. It. We, we learned that, the use of crushed pellet, or even ground bait itself on its own, but whatever. But mixing it in a certain way. Yeah. So you could feed it as an attraction. You know what I mean? So there's a bit of um, dust, a bit of particles falling through the water. Yeah. But actually, when you look at the bottom, there's not in there. Only yeah. your micro pellets. Yeah. So yeah. You, you're using ground bait as a slight attractor. We've done a video on that, haven't we? Just... In the yeah, you see, see, it see it going down and breaking down, but I think the way you mix it as well, you're literally getting it to a solid block almost. Yeah, so yeah it, mix it like a paste in the morning and then riddle it. Get, get it to sort of a slot, let it go into a block, then you're almost grating it through a riddle. And yeah. It's just so backwards compared to what you traditionally do with ground bait. But Yeah, but it, it's not ground bait. That's the thing, isn't it? You can't treat it as a ground bait. It is, but it isn't. It's crushed pellet. Yeah. So it, it's, yeah, it yeah. doesn't fizz or get active or anything like that. It just sinks to the bottom. It's how fast it sinks and what it does on the way down that you can use to your advantage. But it's got to be used in the right place. So fishing in that way, that negative little airy fairy skimmer fishing, it's got to be on the little tiny venues that they can't escape on. Yeah. If you were to try and do it here, you would not get a bite. No. Somewhere that you Nothing have to draw there. the fish in. It, it's, it's right when the fish are present already. I think it'd work in the little one, the shallower one, Jay. Maybe, but again, a little or smaller lake. Yeah. When the fish are already in front of you, great. Yeah. If you've got a big expanse of water like, like today, where we are at, what, we're on lands down at Meadowlands, you've got to attract fish into your peg. Yeah. And there's a lot more miles as well at these big venues that come into your peg all the time, isn't there? So it's just, it's not, it's not, what am I going to say? It's not productive enough. I think it's that, not aggressive enough. That was always a carpy term where your bigger waters with no when you've not got features to fish to and it's a big water, you've got to make your bait to be the feature that you're fishing to for the reason the fish are there. Yeah. And obviously small, like that, the fish are always going to be round you and near you on Birch House. They're never oh, like going to be that. far away. Yeah, so carpy terms, you'd single bait it in the area yeah. where they are, but if they weren't in your area, then you need yeah. an attraction instead. Yeah, if you've got a 98-acre lake yeah. and you don't know where the carp are, you've got to give them a reason to be there, which is what but yeah. they're always going to be as far away as possible as well. That's why like linear fisheries are all about sort of spotting 
a big bed of bait out as far as you can and sitting on it and it's letting it, them come to, to you. Come in. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that thinking, Rich. It is the same sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to attract. Whereas if you haven't got to attract and the opposite's happening, you have to be a bit more careful and, and weed them onto it. But yeah, so that, that was the first thing, wasn't it? Intimate skimmer fishing that yeah. sort of evolved a little bit with what we were all doing. After that, it all changed, didn't it? We went to this Cooper's place, which was brand new for all of us this year, yes. wasn't it? It was a brand new one and it, it's quite unique, isn't it? It's quite a different venue in terms of silvers, isn't it? Yeah, with, with the stock, what it's stocked with and a lot, yeah. it's deeper than your sort of average commercial slightly. Yes, five, oh, your depths are what, five to ten foot? Yeah, I'll say that. Yeah, maybe a little, yeah, five there's, to ten foot pretty there's much. There's nothing in there that you don't really want to catch either, is there? No, you know what I mean? no Everything's... little tiny silvers. Everything is pretty much quality, isn't it? Yeah. Some little perch, but... Everything silver, silvers is massive, and it's eyed, big, massive, vintage eyed. And it, and again, this is where I've learnt something new with that. I mean, tapered rigging all day. That's something new for me. Yeah, you know that, what I mean. That's been the thing, hasn't it? Yeah. We'll come into that in a minute. Talking to all the loose feeding, so just uh, setting the tone and all that. Yes, but it is. It, it's another fairly. Uh, you'd class it as an open water venue, even though there's an island in the front, in the middle yeah. of the lake. But the islands are relevant, isn't it? You ain't fishing to that. It's all open water. Fishing short, fishing long, fishing. Yeah. Fishing short, fishing long, fishing. Yeah. I like that, mate. That, that's you, you've is. not confused yeah. anyone there, have you? No, I even confused myself saying it. Um, How do you think I feel? What's that one? Skimmer. I was on the drop, that. Was it? Uh, uh, you're getting brave swinging them, aren't you? Hybridy. Hybridy. Can we 14 ducks, Jay, lad? You know what I mean? Yeah, boy. Um, what am I on about Coopers? So, yeah, but this place is weird and it do my flipping brain in Coopers because <laughs> you said I've yes never then, known yeah. a venue. We, we've been, what, half a dozen times each? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Six to ten times each. Every Which is probably single more, more practice than you do for a fish. We have Jordan <laughs> said that. So we? We've actually put more effort in it, but it's what I said last night. It's because we've got nothing else on. It's winter, so you're like, oh, come on then. Is, is not, it does force you to go, doesn't it? Having a project yeah. or something that you're working towards. It's yeah. same as like booking on a league, I guess, isn't it? Where... It is, isn't it? it? It's just something to get your teeth into a little bit, a bit of effort. So we all have, and we've all been several times, haven't yes. we? And we've drawn our proverbial plums We have off. drawn. Well, you have. I haven't. All of us have now been on. I've been on the 20s three times. Andy's been on the 20s three, three times. Three times. And you've been on the 20s twice. Three times. So but, but, mm. we've all drawn our plums off equally <laughs> all the times. Yes, yes, Richard. Just Richard's had them on slightly livelier weather conditions <laughs> than what we've had. <laughs> I know, you have in fact the, <laughs> the windiest days ever. It's always been... No, to be fair, when you were on 28 and nearly died through a tree... Oh yeah, nearly died then. That was very windy. But yeah, we, we've drawn our plums off three times each, being on the right areas and caught some fish. But it's so different every flipping time you sit down, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's one day you'll catch 20 pound of roach, loose feeding, catching loads of fish. The next time you'll get hardly any bites, but you'll weigh 10 fish for 20 pound, catching yeah. big skimmers and big eyed. The next, it's a bit of a mix. It's doing my I don't think I've ever been to a venue that's like so diverse every no. time you go. Every time you sit you, down, it's different. You can't formulate a plan at all, can you? No. I Even on the that. good pegs, you, you can't. You've just got to see yeah. what's occurring. You've got to see what type of day. I th do you think it's a lot to do with because of the type of year that we're at and everything yeah. does change so quick? I think there's fish in there as well because obviously the ids didn't feed for a bit. We thought they were spawning. The perch have vanished because we thought they were spawning. Yeah, they are big eads. That's what they're moody then. Yeah. Once they get a pound, eads are moody as. But when you say big, they're like two pound average. Oh, they're big. They're, yeah, they there's are. There's plenty of three huge. and four pounders in there as well. Yeah. They are. Oh, you wow. don't get any moodier than them, especially in the winter, innit? Yeah. But it, it does seem we've just had the last match before the final, haven't we? And more got caught than ever before yesterday. Yeah, they did. We didn't catch any of them, no. but everyone else did. We, we just had a lovely day, didn't we? We just missed out on all the fishes today, Jay, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. We did not very good yesterday. Not very confidence boosting, was it, yesterday? No, well, Richard but... did, but... So you cheated and didn't catch anything? I didn't I cheat. did, I did. I cheat, I, yeah, I cheated twice as well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> one feeding catapult, uh, balls of ground bait, fruit catapult, yeah. and then the other one, uh, I put... I put some bait in the edge after when I left. Both accidental <laughs> cheating. So, so the moral of the story is read rules before you actually go yeah. fishing. Oh, that was a good one, yeah. But yes, it didn't affect, we were all good. <laughs> I was well behaved. I tried to tell him, but he, he just wouldn't listen. Um, what, are we, what are we on about? <laughs> what are we on about? So yeah, silver. So this one's different, isn't it? This one Doink. is where you have to attract fish into your peg. Yeah, it's the standard silverfish venue where 
you very rarely catch anything to start with. Yeah. You go in, everyone's looking around, an odd fish gets caught, but not a lot. Always a slow builder, which is standard for deeper water, bigger lakes where they've got room to back off. Yeah. So your airy fairy fishing there has zero place whatsoever, isn't there? Yeah. You have to be aggressive just to make something happen. And it's been, there has been different. It's been, oh, there's been no pellet fishing as yet whatsoever. Even though there's a few big skims in there, it's all been maggot and ground bait and castery and wormy, hasn't it? Yeah. That's what we've been feeding every time. Put maggots and ground bait more than anything. I know, casters don't seem to do the two, which is surprising for like Rob. I think they're, they're just so used to like, you know, people blocking up in fish meal, that aspect of well, aren't they? You know what I mean? Yeah, they like the the fish mealy ground bait, definitely, yeah. don't they? That's working. I don't, I don't know if it's one of those where it's just in, in your head because we've been fishing that crush quite a few places, but that does, yeah. Seem better on there. It doesn't upset them, does it? It doesn't upset any roach fish no. meal. No. It's you the happy feeding over there. pellets and that is your ground bait. But I suppose that that's it's probably worth saying as well, it does get quite a few carp anglers on there. So oh, they're loads. like the big roach in there are gonna have got big because they're eating pellets, because they're eating boilers and yeah. all of that. Yeah, apart from this event, I don't think people well they I know they don't. They don't go there and fish for silvers. No. Yeah, it's like they get carpy matches in the summer where they might catch a few eyes, but yeah. I don't. It's a not lot of a heavily in. pressured match venue. No, which... people go and fish for carp at the venue, don't they? So it's, that's what they're going to eat, of course it is. But, yeah, because it, it's always big and open and windy, we've never been able to fish them nicely, have we, that sort mm. of bait? No. So it's been an aggressive, loose feeding one, hasn't it? And it's yes. amazed me that the difference it makes, that not getting a bite, you have to be aggressive to get bites. Yeah, yeah, you can't just sit there, can you? You've got to like loose feed to attack, even though you know like, well, there's hardly any fish there, but you've got to put it in yeah. to attract that fish. It is, in that right environment, when you're on them big lakes and the fish aren't in front of you. And how important is it being on the line at the right time as well? Yes. You know what I mean? Otherwise they'll just they'll just go, they'll have coming out, because I, they love food, so they'll come into that bait, but if you're not on it at the right time when that particular, because there's not, not loads of eyes we're going for, is it? You know what I mean? No, it's odd big. No, 10 fish and you are emptying it. 10, oh, 10 of these big eyed anyway. Um, yeah, and if they've, they've had the feed up and then that's it, they're gone. So you've got to be on them at the right time. Yeah. You've got to put the feed in. Yeah, you can't sort of feed the line, leave it, go on it and expect them to be there. They've cleared you out and gone, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, they had that yesterday, you know. I caught three yesterday and they were all full of maggots. Probably mine. Probably, <laughs> isn't it? Nicked them off me, ain't you? Yeah, stolen your eye, but I didn't. But anyway, yeah. So it is a different venue, isn't it? And rigs, what you were talking about before, shotting has probably been the most important oh. factor in getting the most out of your peg, hasn't it? Obviously, timing's not like yes. Ridiculous. Cause we we, did, we actually did that video on there, didn't we? With the difference with bulk and droppers to the tapered rig was just like yeah. flicking a switch. It was ridiculous. But yeah. surely that, that sort of plays into each other as well, where if you're fishing those tapered rigs, you're almost trying to dr draw fish that are sitting above the bottom, drawing yeah. them down. So it all sort of works in, in tandem with each other yeah, as well. Yeah, it's just thinking about it, isn't it? Yeah. Because they do, it, because it is so deep. They don't want to be on the bottom. Fish don't live on the bottom, ever. No. Fish feed on the bottom, they don't live there. They don't swim around with their arses scraping along the bottom, do they? <laughs> like, they a you know I mean? like a dog scooping along Like a dog scooping along I hate it when it does. I've got itchy bum. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> bloody. Get off the mat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Big stripe down it. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. It is. Well, I forgot what I mean. What about now? I can just think about the Draw it. Fish don't live on the bottom. Me. Yeah, they don't live on the bottom. And. It's the loose feed that pulls a potential and mounts them down to the bottom. Yeah. A few of them come up, definitely, when there's enough in your peg, don't they? Yeah. But your loose feed there seems to send them down. And that's when you get a bite. You, how often do you, you sit there, don't get a bite, loose feed, lift your egg, put it in, and you get one? Yeah, definitely. And you think, you horrible little buggers were there all along, but they won't go down unless there's a it. reason. They don't look at your bait and think, I'll have that. They have to have something full past their eye line to follow it, don't they? Yeah. And Ooh. is that a big one? That a little bit? Oh, it might be. Perch that. Look at your perch. <laughs> mm. Might be a perch we should have. Am I actually right for one? Yeah, it's a big one if it is. Yeah, big skin bob. Um, yeah, we need to keep talking, don't we? So yeah, that, that's been the next sort of thing, hasn't it? In understanding, attracting fish into the peg and using your rigs to catch them. Yeah. Rather than just your feeding, your rigs have been so much more important in actually getting the bite in it. Because if you put the wrong shotting pattern on that makes your pellet or your hook bait sink like a an house brick you catch half of what you would catch if that yeah definitely the percentage of what you catch is massively dictated just because of your shotting and I'm you being busy as well what is it 
Bitch, go on the pitch. Ooh, sexy bitch. I did a rich then. You see me stand up? I like that. That's a proper. Look at that. They're nice ones, aren't they? Is he a pound? He's, yeah, he's a pound. One pound two, I'm giving him, J lad. A pound him perch. Yeah. Pound perch. Proper. I'm not catching many of them. That, that's weird where they've got it, Coopers. You pair said there were billions of them, weren't they? Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, I caught a load last week, but the little baby ones. Yeah. Normally they're like In two the summer, to six ounces. lots of. We're doing like double figures, 15, 20 pound of them. Oh, my that? We're, we're, they, they're all in the cage and there's no way hidden, aren't they? That match that I drew peg 30 when uh, Rich was second and I won. Ah, uh, right, yeah. When it was still summer. I had really. three big perch then. What do you mean? Like two pounders. Have you? Yeah. And say I've not seen, not any, seen any since. What, what so mean? you only bashed it up because you got lucky with a couple of perch? Got lucky with a well, strike. You no, know, Richard, you've got to get lucky, in not you? <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty much been our winter silverfish fishing, hasn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. Been, it's been different. It's been proper nice not doing the F1 fishing for a change. It's just like, nice to go out and get, get bites, isn't it? Actually, feed, no, isn't you're going to feed a bit, yeah. Yeah. That's the one. It is. I've got nothing against the F1-y fishing. We've just done it a lot. So it was nice to have something new. What but was it's, that? It's probably changed as well, hasn't it, where there's suddenly quite a few big competitions. Obviously, Angling Trust have done theirs for a few years. Yeah. Probably two or three years, is it? Yeah. Uh, Gary sure. Rogers has popped up with his seven grand one, and there's a couple of other... Like A lot of places seem to be having like Silvers Leagues and yeah. stuff as well, and... It, it sort of fits in quite nicely where you can do your winter fishing for silvers, getting your bites and yep. all of that. And then you can sort of end of February, start of March, you can start thinking, oh, qualifiers, yeah, time big matches, pulls back go back it. to Carpi and F1 and Yeah, because you're not getting worse or anything because you're not doing that type of fishing anyway. The yeah. commercial fishing Win is different. Winter yeah. carp fishing or winter F1 fishing oh, doesn't boring. benefit you for your summer carp fishing and summer F1 fishing. No. Really, like, Odd little bits you could probably take over, but it's so different and yeah. so. If anything, your silverfish fishing is closer to it. Yeah. Because at least it's still feeding, rather than just dobbing a, a slice of bread up and down. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it has. It's been a lovely different winter, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Feeling it next it. year for more silvery stuff. Yeah. Again. It's nice having just one lot of kit in it. You just have like six <laughs> single, sockets, all single, single six sixes. elastic. You use the same everything. rigs everywhere, and all. It is. It's mega, isn't it? I've only tied about twenty hooks all winter. You tied I've not tied any. Oh, yeah. I'm still on the oh, same okay. ones. I'm, I'm still on the same <laughs> ones from November. <laughs> I'm the ones that you lent me, Rich. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that was the next step. Next off, we're going to have a chat about something a bit more exciting, a bit more of a jovial one, and fantasise a little bit about what would happen if we won Euro Millions, aren't we? Oh, yes. Oh, that was a carp. Was it? Are you looking? Just here. Literally just there. 20 metres. 25 metres. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, I see something now. 